Have you ever been to a magic show? Aren't they cool? We love magic shows. Even if we know it's a trick, we still love the magic show. And we love those who put them on. Siegfried and Roy, Penn and Teller. When you live this close to Hollywood and Las Vegas, and there are a lot of them. And they're fascinating. We just are mesmerized by magic shows. There's something for everybody. Some people go to a magic show and they just sit there and drool. Whoa, whoa. They clap and they applaud and they're like kids. <laughs> and some people go there and they go, they're trying to figure it out the whole time. How do you do that? Oh, I think I know how you did that. Oh, I saw, I saw him. They like to catch the guy. Now, some people go just to catch the guy's trick. Oh, I saw him do that. I saw them move that. I saw the wires. I saw this. I saw that. Some people go just for that reason. Some people go just to be entertained. They just go to be, to, to look at it and go, wow, that's so cool. I know it's all a trick, but it's still so incredible. The magic shows are all about making things appear and disappear. It's really what they're about. I've thought about this. Oh, it's really, see, here goes my little simple mind again, reducing everything to something that I can understand. Magic shows are about making things appear and disappear. He pulls a rabbit out of a hat. Wow. He pulls a dove out of a scarf. Wow. He pulls an egg out of your ear. Wow. Okay. And then he makes an elephant disappear. He makes a, a, a pretty girl disappear. So that's what magic shows are about. You know, and then there's the other stuff where they cut them in two and all that other stuff. The main thing is you're making something appear to be something that it's not, or you're making something that is not appear to be that it is. So that's how my mind reduces it. And I know one other thing about the magic show. The bigger the thing, the greater the trick. Like if you can make the Empire State Building disappear, wow, you're right up there now. You make New York City disappear. Wow. That would be a, quite a, a magician. False personality is the Harry Houdini of our traveling magic show. And that's what we are. We are a traveling magic show. How are we a traveling magic show? How is false personality the Harry Houdini of our own traveling magic show? Before we can have a magic show, we have to have something that we can make disappear. And remember, the bigger the better, right? So what is it that we have that we can make disappear? Well, tell me, what's bigger than the truth? We are a traveling magic show. We go around making the truth disappear. It's really quite a feat. Since there's nowhere that you can go that the truth is not. Since the truth is what's so, it takes a real magician, a real Harry Houdini. We go around making the truth disappear. And then we take what is there, we make it disappear, and we make it appear to be something else. That's pretty incredible when you think about it. Children are born awake on a small scale. They're born awake into a world of sleeping people, and they soon fall asleep themselves. And when they do, they lose the integrity that they were born with the integrity that comes with being awake. Even on a small scale, there's a certain wholeness that comes from being awake. With the formation of personality, Harry Houdini in our story, real conscience disappears. What is real conscience? Real conscience is based on universal truth. It's what is actually so. But with the appearance of Harry Houdini, real conscience is made to disappear. For us, it ceases to exist. The irony is that without personality, no further growth of essence, which is represented to us by this child, is possible. The irony continues with the stronger the personality, the better, because it provides better food for the potential growth of the child. Essence, the essential you, the real part of you, the part of you that was born, the part of you that existed awake on a small scale before the personality began to coat it. Personality grew around it and coated it. It stopped it right there. But it also protected it. From what? Well, from a world of sleeping people. You've got to be able to see the difference between personality and false personality in order to be able to understand what I'm talking about. Personality needs to develop. It needs to coat essence. That has to happen. What happens along with that is that false personality develops as well as personality. Now, a good householder, in the work sense, is a responsible person who knows something about life, can do something in life in an ordinary way. Well, what can he do? I don't know. He can make his own way with a trade. He can make his own way in a profession. 
He can make his own way. He can be a citizen. He can pay taxes. He can pay bills. He can buy things. He can own a house. He can raise a family. He can impact the community in positive ways. That's a good householder. A tramp, in the work sense, is a person who tries one thing after another. As soon as it becomes difficult, he gives up on that and tries something else. You were to take the population of this country and put it in a pyramid. At the top of the pyramid, you would find good householders. At the bottom of the pyramid, you would find tramps. What is the broadest place in the pyramid? The base. Right, the base. And the apex, the top, is the smallest. So what has the most space that can contain the most people? Well, the base. So you're going to find that in life, most people are tramps. And you're going to find that the good householders rise to the top, supported by a base of tramps. Harry Houdini has made real conscience disappear. And how he's done that is through the simple act of misdirection. The false personality makes real conscience disappear by replacing it with something else. What else? What replaces real conscience? What is it that replaces real conscience? Think. Think. Imagination. The rules and laws laid on you by sleeping people. The rules and laws laid on you by sleeping people. Okay, well, that would be, that would be acquired conscience, wouldn't it? So in a sense, acquired conscience does replace it, but what is, what is the function of real conscience? What does real conscience do that isn't done by those things, that isn't done by imagination? It sees the truth and knows the truth. And knows. Okay. So here's the deal. If you knew the truth about you, how comfortable would you be? Not. How comfortable would you be? Not at all. I wouldn't. How uncomfortable would you be? What does the work say? I would go insane. You would go mad if you could see your contradictions. And what is it that Harry Houdini has to come up with to keep you from seeing those contradictions? What about buffers? Have you ever heard the word buffers before? Buffers? That we actually grow buffers like blocks of wood that get between one contradiction and another so that we cannot see our contradictions. For example, you are not proud. You'll say in a work environment, oh, oh, but yes, I am. But that's a lie. And you know it's a lie because you do not know you're proud. You think you're humble. You think that you're aware enough to know your nothingness and your place in the universe until I catch you. And I say, oh, so you think I owe you. And you go, oh, <laughs> buffers. That's what Houdini, the false personality, puts in the place of real conscience. Buffers make things easy for us. We all want things easy, don't we? I want things easy. I don't want everything to be hard. I don't want everything to be difficult. I want things to be easy. Now, they don't have to be like a total bed of roses. You could throw some daisies in, but it's got to be easy. And we have our own idea of what's easy and what's not easy. But the purpose of buffers is to make things easy for us, to prevent us from seeing what we're really doing and saying. That's the purpose of a buffer. That's the purpose of, see, a magician, he misdirects or redirects someone's attention so that they can't see what he's really seeing, saying, and he's really doing. Isn't that really it? That's what all this act of illusion is. It's all a matter of misdirection so that he can pull something off where you can't really see. You can't see what he's really doing. You can't hear what he's really saying. And we have the same thing in us. And the false personality grows these buffers to keep us from seeing what we're really doing and what we're really saying. So we don't see the contradiction so that we can go ahead and be Thieves and liars, proud, arrogant, self-righteous prigs, and all the while think that we are good householders, that we're just wonderful people, that that little thing over there was just a minor thing that was just, and it was certainly justifiable. This is where we're at, people. This is what it's like. A well-buffered man or woman has no doubts about himself or herself. It's the people who are not very well buffered that have some doubts. And what do they do about that? What do they have in place of the doubts? Because you can't have the doubts for long. Justification. Perfect. Give the lady a gold star. Justification. What people who are not strongly buffered, well buffered have, is they have justification. But somebody who's well buffered, like Steve, he doesn't need any justification. 
He doesn't need any. He doesn't need any excuses. He doesn't need any justification. This is the way it is. He's well buffered. Leaders tend to be well buffered. Oh, wait, I'm a leader. <laughs> Yes, that's because I tend to be well buffered. What does that actually mean? What that actually means is I've got great buffers so that I can't see my contradictions. How else could I stand up here and tell you things to do that I don't do myself? Great buffers. That's how I can do it. We've got to accept the truth one day or not. But if you're going to stay in this work, then it's going to lead you to this. It's going to lead you to this realization. Oh, I'm a leader. I, I must have great buffers. I must be well buffered. And then I look at it and I go, well, of course I'm well buffered. I'm very well buffered. There's no way I could stand up here and tell you what you should do when I can't do it myself if I wasn't well buffered. I must be thinking that I can do it, which of course makes me totally different from you. This work doesn't teach love, doesn't teach faith, and it doesn't teach hope directly. It's based on two things. Those two things are conscience and consciousness. When I say conscience, I mean real conscience. When I say consciousness, I mean something that you don't know about. All our troubles on this planet are the result of unconscious people thinking that they're conscious. We're unconscious to varying degrees, but we're unconscious. Well, let's put it this way. Do you have problems in your life? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you're unconscious because all of the problems on this planet are the result of unconscious people thinking that they're conscious. The difference between the first and second level of consciousness is that in the second level of consciousness, what's the first level of consciousness? Sleeping on our beds. What's the second level of consciousness? Waking sleep. Waking sleep, which is what? How about this? Right now, this. This is waking consciousness. So the difference between the first state of consciousness and the second state of consciousness is in the second state of consciousness, which is much more dangerous than the first state. So you're not much of a problem sleeping on your bed. In the second level of consciousness, the moving center is released from sleep. Now that's big trouble. The only difference is the moving center is now active. Oh no. You have people who are asleep on their beds with a moving center now, and it's active. It's moving them around. So you got these people thinking that they're awake because they're moving, thinking that they're alive because their legs are going and their arms are going and their mouths are going and their eyes are blinking and their hearts are beating. And they have some awareness that that's different from lying on the bed asleep. That's the difference. That's the difference in the two levels of consciousness. That's scary, people. Millions of sleeping people kill millions of other sleeping people feeling the whole time that they're doing it, that they're fully conscious. The third level, self-consciousness, self-awareness, when we're in that, we're not so much under the influence of buffers and we can feel more real conscience. Buffers enable us to do contradictory things without any pain to ourselves. And that is the key without any pain to ourselves. What about everybody else? Oh, they suffer. They suffer greatly because of our contradictions. Look at what we put our children through. I was watching this National Geographic podcast last night, and it's about dolphins and how dolphins parent. The mortality rate of a dolphin calf is 50%. The calf shadows the mother, and everything the mother does, the calf does. The mother stands on her tail, the calf stands on its tail. If her mother stands on her nose, the calf stands on its nose. Everything mirrors it exactly. That is how it learns. Human parents, don't you wish you could get your kids to do that? And I said, you do. That's exactly what your kids do. The only difference is you have buffers and you can't see that what your children doing are exactly what you did. That's what you taught them. No, I didn't do that. The buffers are strong. I never did that. Yes. Yes, you did. You taught them. They mirrored you and others like you because they were born awake into a world of sleeping people and they themselves soon fell asleep. Buffers enable us to do the contradictory things without any pain to ourselves, add self justifying to the mix and a state of deep sleep is complete. What the buffers don't get, the self justifying does and the contradictions no longer exist. And we go on our unhappy way, creating misery for millions. Wow, what an accomplishment. We're not yet men in the work sense of the word, because we're not yet conscious. The action of buffers is so powerful, so powerful that we actually have to see a single buffer in ourselves before we can even begin to understand what this is about.
Which means 90% of the people that you will ever meet will not understand anything about what I'm talking about for themselves. They'll understand that you have buffers, but they'll never be able to apply it to themselves, not really apply it, see it. You've got to be able to see a single buffer in yourself. That's where it all starts, with a single buffer. It has to start there. Why? Well, because if you saw a lot of them, you'd squirt. You'd come undone. You couldn't deal with it. You can't deal with your contradictions. That's why the buffers are there. Just like seeing how Harry Houdini did the trick, it helps us to understand. If you can see, you know, these shows where they show you how the trick is done, and then you go, oh, that trick is ruined for you now. You'll never be the same. You'll never be able to enjoy that trick again because you know. And that's what understanding is. Understanding changes you because it changes how you perceive. So this work is about getting a greater understanding of yourself so that you can change yourself, so that you can do things differently, so that you can alter the course of your life, so that you can raise your level of being. And that's how it works. When I say alter the course of your life, it doesn't mean that things in your life are going to change because you understand. Things in your life are going to change because you understand. But you're not going to understand why they changed that way or how they changed that way because they weren't supposed to change that way. We talked about this this morning. Jess said to Matt, I thought doing this work, my life was supposed to get better, not worse. I never told you that. In fact, I told you just the opposite. I told you it may well get worse. It may well get a lot worse. But we didn't hear that. We didn't want to believe that. We didn't hear that. Oh, no, I wouldn't have done it then. Yes, you would have because you were in a different level. You had a different understanding at that time. When you have a higher understanding, you have a higher tolerance for pain. You have a higher tolerance for suffering. You transform it. You transmute it. You turn it into something else. When you're in a lower level, you just suffer like a dog. You just sit there and yelp and whine. Have you ever overheard someone who really liked you say something about you? It's a simple matter of fact, not to be unkind, not to be unpleasant. Just as a simple matter of fact, who really liked you? You remember the shock it was? It's a huge shock. Why? Because we get to see the contradiction. If they really like us, and we know they do, and they mean us no harm, and they're just stating a simple fact, we have no defense. We accept it, and we hurt, because the buffer is removed, and the contradictions <laughs> slam into each other. Buffers are to make life easy for us. Remove the buffers, and life gets shocky. It's like bumpers on a car. They act as a buffer. They keep you from having your brains jarred out of your head. They take some of the shock. Terrible shock shows us that our imagination of ourself has nothing to do with what we are and what we have done. When you heard that person who really liked you say that, it starts to take away the imagination of yourself, and then you start to see what you really are and what you've really done. It's a terrible shock. And we don't like many of them, and we don't look forward to them, and we certainly don't hang around people who give them. And when we do hang around people who give them, they're not our friends. We make them not our friends. We make them the enemy. Why? Because that keeps the buffers in place. That's why. Consciousness, you remember the consciousness I told you you didn't know what it was? Consciousness is knowing all together. So let's look at the third state of consciousness, the third level of consciousness which is self-consciousness. Self-consciousness is seeing all of you, knowing all of you together, all at once, no buffers. Now, for those of you who felt that you were self-conscious several minutes ago, <laughs> you're now suffering a terrible shock <laughs> because you're not, and you've got to see that. Maurice Nicole said, all truth is painful and yet beautiful in its action upon you. See, all manure is bad until... You can put it on the trees, put it around the trees, and dig it into the earth, and it starts to produce luscious plants and fruit. Then it's beautiful, or great flowers. So it's the action upon us that makes it beautiful. The work brings you to the first real big buffer. That is the discrepancy between your imagination of what you are and what you are really. There's a huge buffer there, and the work brings you to this. It brings you to this buffer and it says, look, slowly, you've got to be able to remove this. And it can only happen slowly because it would puff, gone all at once. You'd go mad, the work says. And I think that's true. I have no experience of that. But in scale, I can say that even having a little bit of a buffer removed makes me pretty crazy. And I have popped buffers out of the way for people from time to time and had them go ballistic. I mean, had them go like psycho. 
roar, yelling and screaming. I've seen them pick things up and try and cave somebody's head in. I've seen them threaten to kill people over it. As we begin to be conscious on both sides of the buffer simultaneously, our consciousness enlarges and then we feel something. What is it we feel? Conscience. If consciousness is knowing altogether, then conscience is feeling altogether. So you start to remove the buffer and then a feeling occurs. And that feeling is what we call pain. Pain. We feel pain. Ow! Make it stop! Put the buffer back. Step away from the buffer. <laughs> yeah, step away from the buffer. Put the buffer back. Step away from the buffer. Do not go near the buffer. We, we, we absolutely hate it, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> well, look, we have fun, if nothing else. In our misery, we have fun. In our pain, we have fun. Look, if you can't laugh at yourself, you're in the wrong work or learn to laugh at yourself. Our answer to everything is to run away. Well, this isn't right for me. <laughs> it's painful. This isn't right for me. No, 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 no. This is absolutely right for you. You just need to laugh at yourself. You need to learn to laugh at yourself. You need to learn to not to take yourself so seriously, not to take this image of yourself so seriously. It's just your imagination. It's all false personality. And remember we talked about, you need to understand the difference between personality and false personality. Personality is what got you your career. That's what went to school. That's what, you know, that, that's the part of life that you acquired that you needed to live in life to become a good householder. Right? False personality is what makes you a tramp. False personality is that part that you acquired from life that was dirty, that you didn't need in life, that started to hobble you and hinder you and cripple you, that started to make you dysfunctional, that started to fragment you in ways that you needed buffers to protect you from. It's the miswiring. We pay an enormous quantity of force to keep the invention of our self going. You have no idea what it costs you to keep this lie that you think you are going, to keep it puffed up. Just not who we are. But we can't face who we actually are because it's too painful. Growth of consciousness and conscience go hand in hand. Conscience is the fire which begins to change us. You know, in the work they say that a man is like a jar of powders. And every time the jar is tapped, the powders shift. What this means is that we're not one. And every time something from life taps us, everything shifts and some new eye takes over. Ooh! You know, so this eye says, no, I'm here for the duration. I'm right here. Don't worry about me. I'm right here. And then something comes along and taps us. It's like, oh, where did that eye go? Oh, he's gone. The powder shifted. Some other eye is in control now. I'm out of here. That's it. I've had it. This is the last straw. But conscience, that pain, that heat, that friction is what is set underneath that jar of powders. And the powders start to, under the heat, they start to mold together. They start to come together. There's a transformation that occurs and they start to become solid, crystallized, as it were. The purpose of this work is to crystallize you in the right way so that you have a real eye that can be in touch with real conscience, a real essence, a real essential you that doesn't need any buffers, that can be known all at once, can be felt all at once. Integrity, wholeness, not fragmentation. That's what this work is about. Why? Why? Why have that? Well, your life would be easier, for one thing, with that. Decisions are a lot easier that way. There are a lot of things that are a lot easier, but there's more than that. Because only then can you do anything for this earth. Only then can you do anything to heal the sick, hurting, bleeding, pussy earth. It's not right for people to be murdering one another. It's not right for people to be doing what they're doing to each other. It's not right and you know it, no matter how we justify it or try to justify it. Even the warriors want peace. They just want it on their terms and they're willing to make war to get it. We're so far gone in sleep, so far removed from real conscience, that we've got to be reminded from the outside. I told you this morning, you have to hear from without what you really know inside already. I don't know how many times over the years I've heard people say, they've come to me and they've said, it's not that you're telling me anything new. It's like you're telling me what I really think inside, but I haven't been able to verbalize. And so I go, well, I guess that's my gift, to be able to verbalize what you can't verbalize. What you know, what you know, really know inside of yourself. And I put it into words and remind you of what it is you really want. 
And that can be inspiring. It can be aggravating. It can be pleasant. It can be unpleasant. Because there are times we don't want to be reminded what we really want. There are times when we want to go on vacation. There are times when the little eyes have taken over and their little pea brains cannot hold these big ideas. And they just want to go have a pizza. <laughs> they just want to go have a banana split. I don't care if I weigh 800 pounds. I don't care if my doctor says I'm a diabetic. I'm not going to die if I eat another banana split. I want a banana split. Little eyes. That's why I reduce everything to big eyes and little eyes. This makes life so simple for me. And I'm not very bright. I'm not a smart guy. You know, look around. I got smart people here. People are really smart. Educated people. Smart people. I'm not like that. And finally, I'd like to share with you something that Gurdjieff said. No one can change as long as they take themselves as one person. We take ourselves as one person all day long, saying, I, as if it were some unchanging thing in us. Now, the problem is that the show must go on, but it doesn't have to be a magic show. I want to read you something that Gurdjieff said, because I think it's good. The chief thing that you forget is that you are not beginning from the beginning with a nice, clean, new machine. There stand behind you many years of a wrong and stupid life, of indulgence in every kind of weakness, of shutting your eyes to your own errors, of striving to avoid all unpleasant truths, of constant lying to yourselves, of self-justification, of blaming others, and so on. All this cannot help affecting the machine. The machine is dirty, rusty, and in some places, artificial appliances have been formed, the necessity for which has been created by its own wrong way of working. These artificial appliances will now interfere very much with all your good intentions. They are called buffers. Buffer is a term that requires special explanation. Buffers are like the contrivances on railway carriages to lessen shock. If there were no buffers, the shock of one carriage against another would be very unpleasant and dangerous. Buffers soften those shocks and render them unnoticeable and imperceptible. Exactly the same appliances are to be found within man. They are not created by nature, but by man himself, although involuntarily. The cause of their appearance is the existence in man of many contradictions of opinions, feelings, sympathies, words, and actions. If a man throughout the whole of his life were to feel all the contradictions that are within him, he could not live and act as calmly as he lives and acts now. He would have constant friction and unrest. We fail to see how hostile the different eyes of our personality are to one another. If a man were to feel all these contradictions, he would feel what he really is. He would feel that he is mad. Moreover, a thought like this deprives man of his self-respect, self-confidence, weakens his energy. Somehow or other, he must master this thought or banish it. He must either destroy contradictions or cease to feel and see them. But if buffers are created in him, he can cease to feel them, and he will not feel the impact from the clash of contradictory views, emotions, and contradictory words. So as you can see, there are two ways to do this, to deal with the impact of our contradictions. One is to grow buffers. And the other one is to remove them. Buffers are created slowly and gradually. Very many buffers are created artificially by education. Others by the hypnotic influence of all surrounding life. A man is surrounded by people who live, speak, think, and feel by means of buffers. Imitating them in their opinions, actions, and words, a man involuntarily creates similar buffers in himself. Buffers make a man's life more easy. It's very hard to live without buffers, but they keep him from the possibility of inner development because buffers are made to lessen shocks, and it is only shocks that can lead a man out of the state in which he lives, that is, waken him. Buffers help a man not to feel conscience. Conscience is a term which needs explanation. In ordinary life, the concept conscience is taken too simply, as if we had a conscience. Actually, the concept conscience in the sphere of emotions is equivalent to the concept consciousness in the sphere of the intellect. And as we have no consciousness, we have no conscience. Consciousness is a state in which a man knows all at once everything that he is, that he in general knows, and in which he can see how little he does know and how many contradictions there are in what he knows. That's consciousness. And as everyone has within him thousands of contradictory feelings which vary from a deeply hidden realization of his own nothingness and fears of all kinds to the most stupid kind of self-conceit, self-confidence, self-satisfaction, and self-praise. To feel all this together would be not only painful, 
but literally unbearable. That's what Gurdjieff had to say. Now, where does that leave us? Well, where that leaves us is the show must go on. You can't just give up your life. You can't just stop here. Oh, I've got buffers. Oh, I don't have consciousness. Oh, I don't have conscience. Oh, what am I going to do? Well, what you're going to do is what you're doing. You're going to go on. You work. You work. You do the best you can do right now, right now, right now. But you don't give up. You don't quit. You don't run. You don't hide. You deal with it. As it comes up, you do the next thing. This work is good. Maurice Nicole said, this work is the word of God. When he said this work, he wasn't talking about just the fourth way. He was talking about the word of God. Mm -hmm. He was talking about the truth, the universal truth that will lead man to liberation. Liberation from what? Liberation from his contradictions and the insanity produced by them. The show must go on, but it doesn't mean it has to go on the way it's always gone on. And it doesn't mean it has to continue to be a magic show because every time we figure out one of Harry Houdini's tricks, we are changed. When we are changed, all of life changes for us. And all of life changes for everyone we ever meet and everyone we know here, in the future, and in the past. Because all of these circles all touch. We're all interconnected. And that's the way it is. You heard it right here.